Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make a suitcase and neck pillow for your stuffed animal, both travel essentials for bringing your stuffed animal on vacation. This video was highly requested, so let's get started! I'm going to start with the really easy neck pillow. So I'm first grabbing some thin cardboard and drawing almost a full circle. This is going to kind of be the shape of the neck pillow, so I want this inner circle to be just big enough to fit around my stuffed animal's neck, and then I'm just drawing another curve to give it some width. Then I can just cut it out. And you can make this as big or as small as you want depending on the size of your stuffed animal. Now the only two things we need are a pair of socks, I'm using fuzzy ones, and some stuffing. And don't worry about using a pair of your nice socks, we won't be cutting them or anything so you can always still wear them after. I'm first putting one of the socks around this curved frame, and then I can just start adding stuffing to the sock and that'll kind of trap the mold in. If you don't have any stuffing, you could always just use other pairs of socks or just scrap fabric. After that first sock is pretty fully stuffed, I'm just going to put a little stuffing in the next sock and put it around the cardboard the same way as last time. And for this side, it was a little harder trying to get the stuffing in and mine kept falling off. But in the end, I really just tried to wiggle that cardboard in there. And once the second sock is about halfway stuffed, I'm just pulling the extra around the other sock. And this closes the whole thing up without using glue or sewing anything. And in the end, it should kind of look like a croissant. I'm just adjusting some of the stuffing to even everything out and it's done. After trying this on, I thought it looked a little big, but you can always use smaller socks. I'm honestly just really happy that I can always take this apart and still wear these socks. Now I'm going to move on to the suitcase and I'm going to be making this out of black cardstock, but you could also use construction paper. I'm first cutting out a rectangle a little bigger than the size I want the suitcase to be. Mine was probably around 3.5 by 5.5 inches. And I'm going to kind of fold up the sides of this to make a little tray. So at each corner I'm making about a centimeter deep cuts and then folding all these sides up. After that, I'm grabbing a glue stick to connect those side tabs, so I'm just gluing down that extra to the next side. And after doing that to all of them, you should have what looks like a little tray. After that, I've cut a strip of cardstock about one and a half inches wide, or however thick you want your suitcase to be, and I'm just applying glue on one of the sides of the strip and pasting that kind of to the sides of the tray. And I made sure to start on the bottom so the seam ends up on the bottom of the suitcase. After securing that first piece, I had to grab a second strip because my paper wasn't long enough. After that, it'll kind of look like a bathtub, those corners have rounded out. But now I'm grabbing a second piece of cardstock, placing it not at the edge of the paper, and just tracing around it with a pencil. After drawing this first pencil guideline, I'm going to actually draw a border around this. I probably made mine a centimeter wide, and this border is the one I'm going to follow when cutting this out. The next thing I'm going to do is make some small cuts around the corners, which should be pretty rounded. And you'll want to make sure the cut stops at that outline we drew. Once you get to the straighter part, you don't really have to make cuts there. After doing those on all the corners, I'm going to move on to making a design on my suitcase. And yes, I'm using a black sharpie on black cardstock, so it's going to be a very subtle design. I looked at luggage online to get some inspiration and decided to go with three lines on each side that kind of curve outwards. And I couldn't find the reference photo I was remembering, so maybe I just made it up. But I just drew three straight lines first, and then at the tops, kind of curved them outwards to the side. After doing that again on the other side, I'm going to flip it over to the back and start folding up the edges like I've already done before. Next, I'm cutting two more strips of cardstock about the same width as the height of the folded up sides. And before I attach these, I'm going to try the lid on to the main suitcase piece. And I want it as snug as possible. You can always fold over the sides a little more if you want it to be tighter. Since mine was perfect, I'm going to repeat the same steps as last time, just gluing the strips to the sides of the lid, starting at the bottom. This is what's really going to hold in those cut corners, so make sure to press that on really firmly. After making sure the whole perimeter is covered, we can attach this onto the main suitcase piece. Before I do that though, I'm going to trim off any extra from the sides that were sticking out. Now I'm just going to attach the two together using tape. To make sure the sides of the lid go fully over the suitcase, you'll actually want to tape the lid on slightly below that top edge, and once you close it, you'll be able to tell if you need to adjust it and move the tape down further. I thought mine was good, so I just added a little bit more tape. Next, I'm going to add a little tiny handle to the side, and this is optional, but I just noticed when looking up luggage that a lot of them had this on the side. This would be if you just wanted to grab it and lift it by yourself. So I just cut a tiny strip of cardstock and glued that to the side of the bag. And I didn't glue it completely flat so it looks like you could still grab it. Next, I need to add the main handle, and I'm making this out of wire, but if you don't have wire, you could always use pipe cleaners or even make it out of cardboard. I'm starting by straightening out a piece that I want to be the length of the handle, but I'm leaving about a centimeter of extra. Then I'm just going to bend it 90 degrees and then bend the other side 90 degrees and you have your handle shape. Then I'm just cutting off the excess. And believe it or not, it's actually best if the ends are even, so do not do what I did. 
Now I need to poke some holes through the top, so I'm first just marking it with the wire, and then I'm using one of my bigger pins to poke those through. And hopefully you can then wiggle in your handle. After poking through the other side, I still want some extra inside the suitcase, so I can bend that extra to the sides. Mine was pretty hard to make even, just because the two side lengths of mine were so different, so hopefully that does not happen to you. But now I can just tape that extra wire to the top of the suitcase. You don't really have to do this if you want to be able to push the handle down, but then it probably won't stay up on its own. Next I'm adding a little black grip at the top of the handle just to make it look more like a handle. And to do this I'm just hot gluing on a piece of black felt. Craft foam would work well for this too. After that, the last thing to add is the wheels. I'm just using two black buttons for this, and I'm gluing them onto the back corners of the suitcase. I considered actually making these real wheels that will rotate, but after just gluing them on, I'm so glad I didn't do that because the buttons are so smooth that they just glide over any surface and make it feel like they're actually rolling. But after that, your suitcase is done! If you want to pack actual stuffed animal clothes in here, this size might be a little small for a Build-A-Bear. You'd probably only be able to fit one outfit, so for demonstration purposes, I'm just packing a few Beanie Boo outfits in here. Now, my suitcase was a little plain, so I decided to make little tassels to decorate it with. This is optional, but it will definitely help distinguish it from all the other black luggage. I'm just grabbing some embroidery thread and cutting off a small piece like this, and then I'm laying it parallel to my fingers and trying to hold it in place. Then I'm going to wrap the rest of the string around my two fingers. And sorry that this is mostly out of frame, but I'm going to wrap this around my fingers about 20 times. After that, I can just cut it off and cut one more piece of embroidery thread off that's probably around 6 inches. And I'm scooting that extra string that was between my fingers all the way to the top. Then I'm pushing that second piece of string between my two fingers because I want it to wrap around the entire little bundle. Then I'm going to tie it up just once and remove it from my fingers. I have it tied around pretty loosely, so I'm just going to try to scoot that up a little bit more towards the top. Then I can pull it tight and tie one more knot and that will lock it in place. Unfortunately, that string I had looped in at the top from the very beginning pulled out, so I just had to put it in a needle and reinsert that. This is how I'm going to tie it onto the luggage. Now the last thing I do is cut that longer bottom loop, and now you have a tassel! I ended up making another one with white string. Now I'm just tying both of them onto the handle so they kind of sit at the bottom. I love the pop of color this gave to the luggage, and this is actually something my grandparents do. They tie colorful yarn around the handle, that way they can easily find theirs at baggage claim. And the last thing I wanted to tell you is how I made that mini luggage in the last episode of Ellie and Shelly. So for most of these, the main base of the suitcase is a floss container. Then I either painted it or covered it in washi tape. Then I used either buttons or craft foam for the wheels. And for the handle, I just bent a pipe cleaner into shape and taped it on top. Now I got all the extras out of the way and I can finally end this video. I really hope you try this out. Even if you yourself aren't traveling, it might be fun to give your stuffed animal a little pretend vacation. Don't forget to like this video, comment any requests you have, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to stay tuned for season 2 of Ellie and Shelly starting Monday. I'll see you next time!